Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw trees using the phrase structure rules that you learned in previous videos. There are two methods for drawing trees. One is to go from the top to the bottom, and the other is to go from the bottom to the top. Experienced syntacticians always go top to bottom, and in a few example videos that I'll put later in this series, we'll do exactly that. We'll do top to, to bottom tree drawing. But for beginners, it is often the case that you're better off going from the bottom to the, to the top because you won't leave anything off if you do that. So we'll talk about the bottom-up method, but keep in mind that most syntacticians do it in the opposite direction. Here's the thing. When you're drawing your trees, the first thing you want to do is make sure you know the parts of speech for all the word words in a sentence. And ideally, you want to just mentally go through what words go with what other words in terms of constituents. So you can use your constituency tests that you learned, movement, replacement, standing alone, ellipsis, uh, modification relationships, conjunction, and see if words in fact go together into constituents. When they do, you're going to draw the tree based on those constituents that all lie one inside one another. If you're going from the bottom up, what you're going to want to do is start um, with the stuff that's on the right-hand side of the sentence, the end of the sentence. The reason for this in English is English trees tend to embed towards the right. So the most deeply embedded things are going to be on the right-hand side of the sentence. So if we're going bottom-up, you want to start on the right. You're also going to want to start with the things that are most likely to be deeply embedded. Those are typically adverb phrases and adjective phrases. So if you start with those, working from the right to the left, you're going to get the stuff that's most deeply embedded. Then you do your noun phrases your, and your prepositional phrases and your verb phrases. Um, sometimes you have to interleave these because remember, our rules are recursive, which means you can have noun phrases inside of prepositional phrases and prepositional phrases inside of noun phrases. So we will have to sort of cycle through these rules. I would do those next. Then you do the TP and CP rule um, last. Do the most deeply embedded clause, that's usually the clause that's on the right-hand side, although not always, and then work your way up the tree. And here's the most important thing you should do. Make sure you check that your tree corresponds to the rules. If you've got a, a chunk of tree that can't be generated by a rule, then you've done something terribly wrong and need to start again. So let us um, do some examples. And then uh, you'll have the opportunity to practice on your own from um, examples in the textbook. So um, there are a few things that um, should be obvious, but I'll say them anyways. Um, first of all, nothing can be left dang dangling in space. Everything has to be connected to something higher up in the tree. Um, another thing that is really important is you can never cross lines. So if you're tempted to draw a tree structure where you've got the, or, the word order A, B, but your lines cross in order to get that word order, you've done something wrong. Um, also, it's sometimes tempting to hang phrases off of words. That's never the way it works. Words are always inside of phrases. Um, I do have one additional pet peeve that I would like to draw to your attention. Um, this fact, the fact that people do this actually has a long history. That once upon a time, trees did look like the, my pet peeve. That is, people often drew lines 
between the category and the word itself. Don't ever do this. This, if you do it, what you end up doing is screwing up some definitions that we're going to need in the next unit, having to do with what we call structural relations among the items in the tree. Th what this line says is um, an, uh, a noun phrase consists of a noun. That's true. But then it says a noun consists of peanuts. That is incoherent. The noun does not consist of peanuts. The noun is peanuts. So the correct way to draw this tree is to draw it with no line between the end category and the word itself. You never want to have a line between the category of a word and the word itself. All right, let's do some practice. So here's our sentence. The very big man gave the marble to his son. And your first step here is to identify the parts of speech. Pause this video and do that. So here are our parts of speech. The is a determiner. Very is an adverb. Uh, big is an adjective. Uh, man is a noun. A give is a verb. The is a determiner. And uh, marble is a noun. Two is a preposition. His, this one's a little tricky, we're going to treat as a determiner. It's a possessive pronoun. We'll come back to that question a little later. But for now, treat it as a determiner. And then uh, son is a noun. We're going to start scanning the tree from the right to the left. And we're going to do adverbs and adjectives first. So what we'll notice here is that we have an adverb and an adjective. And that adverb modifies that adjective. That means we're going to put um, a, an adverb phrase right on top of that adverb and have that as a sister to the adjective. So we're going to put an adverb phrase right there. Then that adverb phrase modifies the adjective. And we get an adjective phrase. Don't skip out that adverb phrase. You'll be tempted to. But don't skip it, because the rule for adjective phrases says the thing that must be the sister to the adjective is an adverb phrase. Not an adverb, an adverb phrase. So you need that phrasal category right there. Okay, so we've done our adjectives and adverbs. Now we're going to start on the right-hand side of the rule of the sentence and do our noun phrases. So we have a determiner followed by a noun. That is licensed by our our um, noun phrase rule to be a noun phrase. So we're going to build a noun phrase on top of that. Um, we have another example of that with the marble. The marble is a noun phrase. And uh, here's one that's a little more complicated. We have the determiner, the adjective phrase, and the noun at the very beginning of the sentence. Those together form a noun phrase. So we've got three noun phrases, um, all of which consist of a determiner and a noun. The first one also has an adjective phrase in it. Okay, now we're going to do prepositional phrases. Again, start on the right-hand side of the rule. We have a preposition followed by a noun phrase. That is, by definition, a prepositional phrase. There are no other prepositions in the sentence, so we can move on to the next step. And the next step are verb phrases. Now, this verb, give, has two modifiers. It has the marble and it has the prepositional phrase, to his son. Both of those things modify the verb, so they're going to be sisters to the verb. That means they have the same mother, and that mother is the verb phrase. Check your verb phrase rule now, and you'll see that verb phrases can consist of a verb followed by a noun phrase, followed by a prepositional phrase. And our last step here is we have a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. That is the stuff that's on the right-hand side of a TP rule. So a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase gives us a TP. And there we have the tree for this sentence. So let's now briefly talk about how you would construct the bracketed diagram for this same sentence. Here, and you can pause this video and have a look at each of the steps as we go. The, the top step um, is just identifying the parts of speech. 
At each level, you'll notice I have red parentheses. These are the parentheses that are added at each step. Um, so you identify the parts of speech, you identify the adjective and adverb phrases, which I've abbreviated here as AP just to make it quicker. You have the, P, the NPs, then you do the um, PPs, and then you do um, the verb phrase, and then you do the whole sentence. You can pause the video and check out those red brackets, and they'll tell you what to do. Now, let's look at another sentence. The big lazy dog bit a mouthful of food. Here we have two adjective phrases. Notice that unlike in the previous sentence, where, one, where the adverb modified the adjective, both of these adjective phrases modify the noun. So they're both going to get an adjective phrase on top and be closed off with no modifiers. So big and lazy are our adjectives. We're going to close them off with an adjective phrase each. All right, now we're going to do our noun phrases. Let's start at the right-hand edge of the sentence. We have food. Nothing modifies food. Be careful, you might be tempted to think that preposition modifies the noun, but remember, prepositional phrases always have the nouns inside of them. So nothing modifies this, this head noun, so we're just going to go straight up to a noun phrase. We can just cheat right now and put that PP on top. Now this next noun phrase is a little trickier. Think about the things that modify mouthful. The determiner a ah, definitely modifies mouthful, but so does the prepositional phrase of food. Here's one of these cases where you have to interleave drawing a prepositional phrase and a noun phrase. So we, we drew the noun phrase for food, then we drew the prepositional phrase for of food, and now we're going to stick that prepositional phrase inside of that noun phrase. This is different than the previous sentence where the prepositional phrase modified the verb. This prepositional phrase modifies the n. You have to be very careful about this and ask, what item do my prepositional phrases modify? Do they modify an n or do they modify a v? So we're going to bring that pp, that determiner and that end together to form a noun phrase. We have one more noun phrase to do, that's the big lazy dog. Here dog is the head and it has three modifiers, the determiner, the two adjective phrases, and we're going to put those all together inside the noun phrase. All right, now we've done our noun phrases and our prepositional phrases, we're going to do the VP. Here the VP is a little simpler than the one in the previous sentence. The verb and the noun phrase together form the uh, VP, the verb and its object noun phrase. There's your VP. Now look what you have. You have a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. That should scream to you, that's a TP, so we're going to stick a TP on top. And there's our tree for this sentence. And here's the bracketed diagrams for the same sentence. Again, the red brackets on each line are the new brackets that I add to the structure. You can pause the video and look at this if you like. Let's do one more. I will finish an assignment about trees. Again, your first step is to mark what the parts of speech are for this. There's probably one word that is tricky for you, that's will, and I'll tell you that that's a T node. It marks a tense or an auxiliary. So go ahead and give that a shot. All right, next what we're going to do is draw our adjective phrases, there are none, and our noun phrases. So we start on the right-hand side. We're going to start with the noun trees. Nothing modifies trees. It's just going to get a noun phrase on top. Now I'm going to skip um, past assignment and go to I because that one is easy too. Nothing modifies I, so it just gets a noun phrase on top as well. Okay, now we're going to do prepositional phrases. Um, the P with the NP go together, and that gives you a PP. Now there's a reason that I did that first before I did an assignment, and that's because this prepositional phrase modifies assignment. So I needed to draw the tree for assignment before I could hook it in, the tree, excuse me, the tree for about trees 
before I hooked it into assignment. I need to get that PP um, constructed first. Now, let's look at assignment. Assignment has uh, two modifiers. It has the determiner and, and it has the prepositional phrase about trees. So we're going to stick all three of those things together according to the principle of modification, and they give us a noun phrase. That structure is licensed by your noun phrase rule, a determiner followed by a noun followed by a prepositional phrase. Okay, next we're going to do the VP. Now, be careful about the tense node. The tense node is not part of the VP. The tense node is going to be part of the TP. The, the, the verb phrase consistent, constituent consists of the verb plus the noun phrase and assignment about trees. So we'll connect those together into a VP. And then we have three things, a noun phrase, a tense node, and a verb phrase. And when you see those three things, you know you have a TP. And we connect those together into the TP. There's the um, completed bracketed structure, which you will see corresponds to that tree. Now, uh, among the useful tools you have in life, uh, Syntactic tree drawing probably isn't one of them, but it helps us to understand how sentences are structured. So getting good and practicing at it will help you do better syntactic analyses. Let's just summarize what we've talked about. For tree drawing, um, you want to practice, 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 practice. There are two ways of drawing trees. We've only talked about the bottom-up method here, which is the best, best method if you're a beginner. You apply the rules from the bottom up, starting with adjectives and adverb phrases, then NPs and PPs, sometimes you have to cycle those together, and then verb phrases, then TPs. Um, you want to make sure that everything is connected, there are no crossing lines, and you, at the end, once you've drawn your tree, you want to check your tree against your phrase structure rules. In other videos, I'll show you how to do tree drawing from the top to the bottom.